depending on who you ask, some people might say there are political reasons, social reasons, or even uh, racial reasons. But here, uh, there's a big economic reason. Uh, critics have been touting this financial doomsday scenario, uh, the weight of $3 billion on the economy, basically. They're saying that right now, Hong Kong has about 300,000 overseas domestic workers. About 40% of those are actually eligible to apply for permanent residence, residency status. Uh, and if those folks bring, say, their spouses, bring their children over, that could theoretically bring as many as half a million immigrants, and that's what folks here are worried about. Now, the uh, uh, legal counsel for the plaintiff has said that that's a doomsday scenario that will never happen because folks are, may, be, may not stay that long, they may not even apply, they might leave earlier, so they're just saying it's just fear-mongering. Okay, it sounds like a, yeah, a bit of a scare tactic, perhaps. Um, what can the domestic helpers do about this? Is this now their last avenue shut down? Uh, there's one more avenue that they can do. Uh, basically, Mark Daly, who I spoke with, he's one of the legal counsel for this uh, for the plaintiff. Uh, he said that uh, they're going to file uh, an appeals to the high court, and this is the last line uh, before uh, a final answer is reached. It's a very contentious issue, isn't it? I mean, these people, the, these helpers have been in Hong Kong for more than seven years, where people like me, if I've been in Hong Kong for seven years, I can get per permanent residency here. They can't. Right. Is this something unique to Hong Kong? Um, you know, if, some would say that this is uh, second-class treatment for uh, second-class citizens, or what's perceived as second-class citizens around the world. It's not just here in Hong Kong. We're also talking about Singapore as well as the Middle East. Uh, Indonesians and Filipinos predominantly are in these regions. Um, Hong Kong here, you know, uh, uh, helpers, uh, work from Monday through Saturday, but they do have Sundays off. In Singapore, interestingly, they don't have any day off, uh, but that will change come uh, the start of 2013 because of a new law that's going to come into effect. Uh, in the Middle East, it's a little bit tougher. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, over the last few years, there have been incidences where uh, Indonesian maids in particular have actually been beheaded. They've been executed because of violence that they have uh, that they've turned against their uh, their employers. Um, but uh, you know, this is an issue that's going to keep on going, and mm -hmm. uh, this Hong Kong ruling is just one small step backward. We're going to see where this is going to go in the future. Exactly. And many of those, uh, those helpers allow Hong Kong families to have the dual income, to get ahead. And I remember hearing when I first came here that the cost of employing a full uh, domestic uh, staff is cheaper than hiring a car park in a monthly basis in Hong Kong. Puts in perspective of it. It does. It does.